Hello, peeps and peepettes, and welcome to another edition of Spec Commentaries. For all of you out there in the Hediverse and around the IWC, I'm Spec Sun, the host of Spec Commentaries and also the Secluded Paradigm. And, uh, you know, this is sort of an Im impromptu um, topic for discussion, um, something I really didn't plan initially. But it's something that's really been on my mind for the last several weeks. And I just, you know, said, said to myself, all right, I'm going to skip over a couple of the um, spec commentary editions that I was going to do f at first and just include this topic, especially since it's coming very close towards WrestleMania. And it makes a whole hell of a lot of sense to get this out right now while it's still fresh on my mind. And it's a topic that several of you um, out there um, are discussing at this very moment. As a matter of fact, everybody in wrestling pretty much is discussing this, whether you're a talent or whether you're a fan, and it has to do with Sting possibly going into the WWE for the first time in his career to face The Undertaker at WrestleMania 27. It's an idea that's been suffering, surfacing for quite some time now, and I'm just going to share my thoughts about that and also about Sting and his decision to possibly go to the WWE, um, something that we have been discussing as fans ever since um, 1988 when he first arrived, excuse me, 1987, when he first arrived in um, Jim Crockett Promotions, NWA slash WCW, um, around late 1987. And of course, ironically, the Warrior arrives in the WWE in 1987 as well. But... You know, Sting and The Undertaker is something that I think that so many fans around the world would want to see. You're talking about the icon Sting, the guy who dresses in a trench coat um, since 1996, late 1996, has developed this crow gimmick um, that is some sort of an enigma. The guy doesn't speak as much as he used to as the colorful blonde stinger from Venice Beach, California. Unless, you know, this guy right here is someone who's very cold-blooded. Someone who, character-wise, um, entices the fan to such a degree um, that you'll hang on every move. And very, very similar to The Undertaker's gimmick over the last several um, decades now. Hard to believe that, but over the last several decades and it's a clash of the titans that so many fans will definitely want to see, and that's why you have so many, so many people around the internet wrestling community who are discussing this right now. And all of this stems from that 221-11 promo that we have seen on Raw frequently, I should say, over the last several weeks um, up to this day um, that I am recording um, the, the, the um, to re recording spec commentaries at this moment right now. Now, as a fan, it's something I really want to see, but realistically, I don't think it's going to happen, and these are a couple of reasons why I don't think it's going to happen at this point. Um, I think because we are in such an age of the IWC and there's so much information being spread out, I don't think there's been a very accurate port you know, portrayal of what... The what has been going on behind the scenes. If we know any history be between the, the Sting and the WWE, it's this. The WWE will probably make Sting an overture. They'll at least contact him or his people to see if, if there's some interest involved. And usually Sting will teeter around as a negotiating ploy with another employer. And this time, and, and this, over the last several years, that has definitely been TNA wrestling. And... He said no. Now, I understand Sting has some um, issues with the WWE, creatively speaking, of how they work um, and, and how they operate as an organization in terms of the way they treat talent that's not WWE homegrown. It's well documented that um, several years ago when Sting did a shoot interview with TNA Wrestling, that he commented on the WWE's treatment towards Booker T when Booker T first arrived in the company. Basically, Booker T confronted um, The Rock, and The Rock basically said, who are you? Now, many people can take that several different ways. The Rock is, a, is, the, kind of is the kind of guy who had a character and a demeanor about him that only cared about himself, very self-centered. He cared about his, the people and himself when he was a face, and when he was a heel, he cared about himself, of course. But that was The Rock's character, and you just some people just took it as a grain of salt. But most people, like myself, who understand the way WWE operates, especially back then around 2001, 2002. Um, if you're not a WWE homegrown talent, um, you know, they're going to make you realize that you're not a WWE homegrown talent, especially if you're a superstar coming from another organization. 
Um, and particularly if that organization went out of business. And that's, a, that's really what happened to a lot of ECW and WCW guys when they first arrived. So Sting had an opportunity to actually go to the WWE, but like many guys, he was signed for a very long time under um, um, Time Warner in their contract situation with World Championship Wrestling. That's why you didn't see Goldberg for a while. That's why you didn't see Scott Steiner for a while. WWE could have brought these guys in, but these guys, I think for the most part, did not want to give up that free money and also time off with that free money. Um... And I think Sting was one of those guys, you know, even at that point, he was in the dog year, so to speak, of his career. And I still think that he, Sting probably should have pulled the trigger a long time ago to go to the WWE even before that. But at this point, you can understand Sting not wanting to go immediately. But, you know, you fast forward all the way on to his days with TNA. And TNA is such an in-depth organization. And I think Sting knows this. And I think a lot of the older guys, like a Kevin Nash, the Scott Halls, or all the older guys that they, TNA has brought in, I think they use TNA legitimately as their last go around in the business to get that last significant payday, or a payday that that would be very suitable to sort of what they were making at WCW, not completely, but sort of suitable, um, or in other organizations where they were paid handsomely. And I think Sting has used TNA. For several years, ever since he really got in there, you look at the guy, he really hasn't done much in the company. Um, you know, he hasn't really taken care of himself um, conditional, condition wise. Um, his gimmick, as the crow gimmick, has disintegrated a little bit and to meaning very, very little in terms of his time in TNA. And he's just known as the icon, the guy who was very, very famous in WCW. And I think his legacy has been extremely impacted in terms of what the fans think of him being in TNA. And I think this is the ideal time, and I think it's the last time for Sting to finally go to the WWE. The fans have been talking about it, whether it's been indirectly or directly. They have been talking about it. They want to see this guy face The Undertaker, who was basically his mere equal in terms of the way that Crow gimmick and the Dead Man gimmick has been portrayed over the last, um, you know, ever since Sting really started the gimmick, um, if you want to discount his time, his time with TNA. But in WCW, the guy was an enigma. You didn't know what to really think about him. He, did, he really didn't give you as much um, you know, to know about that entire gimmick and that character. Um, he was a secret, and, and that's really what really made it work with him in that whole NWA, NWA angle with WCW. Well, this, the Undertaker has been sort of the same guy, a guy with very few words when he's in that dead man gimmick. And it it's just very captivating if you're a fan. And I think this is just a, one of those last very, very few dream matches that fans want to see. I understand that over the last week or so, there's been a little bit more clarity in terms of the Undertaker and Sting proposal for WrestleMania 27. Apparently, for those who haven't kept up with the news, um, there haven't been there hasn't been much of a huge overture towards Sting and vice versa um, in terms of contract negotiations between both companies. It has been reported that Sting has been in contract negotiations with TNA, but those contract negotiations have broken down um, over the last week or so, and in, which has resulted in Sting's profile not being there up on TNA Wrestling. Um, so it leaves one to continue to speculate um, what Vince McMahon, what Sting and the WWE really have in store for themselves individually at this moment. Uh, what has been reported is that the WWE has scratched, finally scratched the Wade Barrett and the um, Undertaker storyline, which they have been planning for a very long time for WrestleMania 27. And I say that is a tremendous move. It is a great move. I don't understand why people continue to say that um, this so-and-so guy will get a rub off facing The Undertaker. I can never really recall any guy who has faced The Undertaker except for Kane at WrestleMania 14 who has really got a significant rub out of facing the guy. Usually everybody who faces The Undertaker at WrestleMania doesn't get as big a rub or a rub at all as many people may speculate at first. Um... You do, does he have really good matches at WrestleMania? Of course. But does he have matches that propel other guys' careers? I'm not so sure about that. Um, Wade Barrett and The Undertaker can wait after WrestleMania. This is an angle that, that can help get Wade Barrett over, over even more.